does your audience, their audience, right. come to see them dressed up as women, or do they come just to see the grandeur of it all, the glamour of it all, the glitter of it all? Both. I Oh, Basically, both. I mean, the names they bring, we bring in. I think I'm only recently then... that everyone was very uh, uh, like starved for glamour again. I mean, because there were, uh, there were a lot of what I call the 70s women who were suddenly watching a lot of guys get up and drag and saying, hey, wait a minute. You know, I can uh, put those heels on and I can uh, look fantastic. There was a period when it wasn't fashionable to wear makeup. It wasn't fashionable to be fantastic looking yeah. mm -hmm. or to well, now it's okay yeah. you know to say i'm fantastic i'm great and yeah look at me you know you right. you couldn't do that in the 60s or do you, the early do you, 70s do you think there are some women who come to see you that get mad at you no oh, oh I yes don't know. sure i think some oh, yeah. Yeah. are jealous yeah. or envious sure. yeah uh, let me tell you i've heard a little chatter in the hallways today hey wait a minute what are they doing stealing our bag okay but that's not the reason i do it i mean you know uh, I love women, I'm into corny, but some of my best friends are women, you know, a cliche, but it's true. And uh, it's certainly not to make fun of women. If anything, it's to glorify uh, the, the woman, the glamorous woman. Because I think people like Ron said are starved for glamour today. There just isn't much of that left anymore. Taylor, Liz Taylor was like the last why, one of your glamorous why, why, movie why, 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 why wouldn't you find <clears throat> two women? and dress them beautifully. He does them. that too. I, mean, I do that too. surrounded by a cast of ten beautiful yeah. women. I always surround them when I do a play with them with incredible women, with incredible bodies who look incredible because really basically like a lot of people think, oh, your audience is all gay. Mm -hmm. My audience is only gay for about a month and then we get a very mm -hmm. straight crowd. I mean, women behind bars ran in New York alone for a year and that's not a gay audience. You know. And I have I have a cabaret act that I do, <clears throat> and mo my my audience is basically very straight couples. Opening night, all the gay people come, but then it's you, know, you know what I think. College I, age people. Did, you know what I think people. he's asking really, which we haven't cleared up, is the fact of why to do this is to because all of the characters that are written for you and that you do are extremities. I mean, they're um, they're cartoons. They're not, the roles aren't written for... Oh, not to be like real, real women. I mean, they're takeoffs on uh, real women. Or, uh, or like you say, you know, the different... Uh, like Crawford and all those women were very uh, masculine women. I mean, they were really outgoing. They strong, were, strong, strong, tailored, uh, severe, large, yeah. big yeah, bones. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, there just aren't uh, that many actresses today that can play those kind of parts. Also, I have a very, what I would think of as a cinematic mind. So what I try to do on stage is to bring you that close, which we can do here. You know, you can't do that on stage. So you want to be that close to these guys, you know. Uh, Ron made the comment once that it takes a man to be a 70s woman. And uh, in some cases it does. Like it was I got a little trouble with that. I can't believe that there aren't some women out there who wouldn't love to dress well, up. Well, it's just starting be. to happen. Well, it's well, happening. Like, yeah, Bianca Jagger and women like that. Bianca like, Jagger, again, uh, you know? Charlotte Rampling, Jacqueline Bissett. I mean, that's my personal idea of the 70s woman. The, uh, the last of the I don't care girls, you know, they really don't care anymore. <laughs> and they're going to have a good time. Funny, the ones I meet all care. I care, <laughs> I care, I care. <laughs> Let me do commercials here. We will all continue right. with uh, Hollywood Lawn and Divine and Ron Link from New York after these words from the NBC television stations. How did you pick the names Hollywood Lawn and Divine? Well, uh, Divine was given to me by John Waters, who made uh, all the movies that I've done, Pink Flamingos, Eat Your Makeup, Female Trouble, Multiple Maniacs. Mon Eat Your Makeup, Female? Make <laughs> that was the first that one I did. And that's where I played. Could change the whole song, The Party's Over. You wouldn't have to take off your makeup, just eat your makeup. Eat really, the party's take it off over. and eat it. Yeah. But uh, he just thought that I was, and so he said, your name will be Divine. So, um, and that was his idea also, to take a 300-pound a man and make him into a blonde bombshell. Because when you think of a blonde bombshell, you think of Monroe or, or Mansfield or one of those women. But mm -hmm. also, isn't John is very religious? It also has to do with uh, oh, all well, his yeah, characters. Oh, wait a second. Oh, yes. Oh, come on. Oh, he yes. does. I mean, the other people that I worked with that aren't with the production company anymore, with the, one was Extreme Unction. I mean, they had, we all had names like that. He was very heavy Catholic upbringing. Uh -huh. And a lot of that Well, all of them, I would just as soon not have the name Extreme Unction. Oh, That's yeah, you know, yeah. one of the last <laughs> ones, as I recall. Uh, and Holly Woodlawn sounds like a little play on Hollywood. Holly, Holly Woodlawn, what is it called? Anagram? Anagram? Whatever that. Anyway. 
Holly, Holly came from, uh, from Holly Go Lightly, because I used to whistle for cabs, and so did she, in the movie. And mm. Woodlawn came from the Woodlawn Cemetery. When I joined a theater group called the Playhouse of the Ridiculous, every, um, the, uh, the rest of the cast had, had names like Penny Arcade, uh, was Ruby Lynn Rayner, what was her name? Oh, Ruby Ruby, yes, things like all that. So, on my bio, the thing I just, I just wrote that Holly Woodlawn, that uh, I was heir to the cemetery fortune, the Woodlawn Cemetery fortune, and that's how, and plus to play on Hollywood. You said something interesting in the break about how... And I've always wanted to go to Hollywood and put an L-A-W-N at the end of that sign. I'm so glad they finally fixed it. When you leave the theater, you are not dressed up. You wear just normal street clothes, Levi's and yeah. a shirt or something like that. Because if you had to take the subway home... Yeah, <clears throat> right. we, exactly. That's what we were talking before. Like, I mean, why women really don't dress like that. I mean, you cause, you cause a lot of attention when you're painted, even real women. So it's nice to have a limousine waiting for you, you know, out there. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'm, talking, well, I'm talking about New York or any city. When you're not on stage performing, what do you do? I mean, that's your work. I rehearse a lot. Okay. I'm finding myself rehearsing lately. Uh, on stage, um, I, I lead a very basically quiet life. Mm -hmm. I go to the gym. Oh, yeah? <laughs> exercise, yeah, you know. <laughs> okay. I, mean, I even learned how I mean, to roller skate. Been... I roller skate. I'm fabulous. I can skate backwards. How about forwards? That's the tough part. Forwards, yeah. Oh, that is. I mean, you have spent a lot of time shaving your arms. And your yeah, legs. Oh, sure, a couple yeah. hours every day doing all that. That's for your job. Yeah. You have to so you that, hack up you know, the pay. A look real good. This chap is dressed with a big hairy arm and a chest. You know. But now, besides that, I mean, I love uh, plants. I work a lot with plants. I collect Chinese porcelains. I mean, uh, I, um, I mean, many. I like to cook. I like to swim, sail. Um, not unlike any other person. I mean, I'm not going to say my life is your average normal life, because it isn't anymore. I've met a lot Reads of these like people on television <laughs> shows. I mean, we ski, we know. sail, we swim. <laughs> so I've been, it's, it's, it's very exciting. I've been very lucky. I'm very lucky that I work a lot. But like, do you ever talk without the effeminate gestures? I know you're probably doing Are that for Are these effeminate? Us. No, I'm not doing, I'm not, just I'm being very normal. What do you do? I'm really being very normal. Do you I think. Do, do, do you have girlfriends? Sure, I live with a woman. A blonde. And what does she think about this? She loves it. She loves it. You know, we had the guy... My in... parents love it. My friends love it. I mean, you know, my parents are very... My mother is very Catholic. Well, your parents didn't always like it now. Come well, on. no. When I was 15, they didn't understand it. I mean, <laughs> she was going to go to New York City to be a woman. <laughs> so it was very strange. Yeah, no, but I mean, uh, no, the past couple of years, they understand that this is my job. Yeah, and it like... is a job. I mean, it's my work. I work very hard yeah, at it. Yeah, but it's, it's not the same as a lot of other mm. guys' jobs. You know what I mean? It's no. a different no, job. we're not digging ditches. That's true. But, um... I mean, it's a good job. So I think I'm, I'm a comedian, and I think I'm funny. I am funny. You're funny. I'm funny. And uh, people have told me that so long, I believe them now. But, I mean, I can make people laugh. And I think this is a, a God-given gift. I mean, when you're born, I mean, uh, I mean, some people can paint, some people write. But can you make them laugh when you come out in a suit and a tie? Sure. Anytime. You You've know? played a man on the screen. Oh, yeah. So have I. I will again. Raped yourself on the screen. But, I mean, it's a what? gimmick. And look, everybody, let's have a gimmick. Everybody needs a gimmick. So you throw the dress on and the wig, and and everything's bigger than life, and it really, it, it all helps. Yeah, but when did you first do it? Well, that's when John said, I think it'd be funny if you played a blonde bombshell in the movie. And that's when we first did it. I mean, well, no, first when I did it, I remember my grandmother screaming at me because I was running across the lawn in a picture hat and a slip. <laughs> and a pair of red high heels, I was six years old. Tell them the shower curtain story. Come oh, on. So said, get, get the in, shower curtain get story. Get in the <laughs> So, well, no, when I was um, in the 60s, when everyone first started smoking grass and things, we'd all get together, a bunch of us, and get very high. And I loved Dionne Warwick. I wanted to be Dionne Warwick. I didn't care what she looked like, what color she was. I wanted to be Dionne Warwick. So I ran into the bathroom one night and took the shower rings off the shower curtain and put those on my ears and wrapped my head up in a towel and came out and mined <laughs> Dionne Warwick records for about two hours while all my friends just sat down.